Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please Houston call ACR, station for a voice check. Control Houston, please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you I've got you loud and clear. How me? Sounds perfect. Please stand by for opening remarks. Sounds perfect. Please stand by. My name is Dan Terrybury. I'm the principal at Charlevoix Middle High School. Today we are excited for our staff and our students to have the opportunity to visit with a NASA astronaut live. Our whole community is involved and we are very excited for this opportunity. So on that note, let's get to our first question. Hi, I'm Akadia Dewey and what is your favorite part of being an astronaut and getting to go into space? Hi, Acadia. Well, I'll tell you what, I love fixing stuff, and I love fixing stuff that's broken. Uh, that happens from time to time up here, and uh, sometimes when it happens on the outside of the space station, we get really excited because we get to go do a spacewalk and go fi fix it. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, working inside here is, is just as fun. Um, one of the other things I really like to do is, um, is play with your food. Um, playing with your food up here is, one, really fun. And two, you know, one, no one can tell you to stop. So um, lunch is uh, a little bit more entertaining up here. Sometimes we can just uh, lead, lead the rusher. So that kind of stuff is really fun, but honestly, my most favorite part of being up here and being an astronaut is uh, sharing this with everybody uh, who's supported me and is excited about what we're doing up here. I wish everyone could come up here and enjoy this with us, but uh, if I can share it with you even in a little bit, I love to do that. Hi, I'm David Dashalier. What is the hardest thing to get used to while living in space? Hey, David. Well, the hardest part for me is that everything floats, uh, including us. So when we're out doing a spacewalk, our tools try to get away from us. So what we do is we tether them to our bodies or to our spacesuits, and we're tethered as well, because uh, we're going to float away too if we're not take, taking care uh, to stay on the space station. Um, this happens in the space station as well, but we don't have tethers like this. This is one of the tools we use uh, out when we're doing spacewalks. Um, but we don't have tethers uh, so much here in the space station. So just this morning I was working on an experiment. I opened up the bag and it was just a yard sale. Stuff went everywhere. Um, so I'll tell you what, it, uh, it definitely keeps us on our toes. Um, and by things spreading out, things tend to take a lot longer. Uh, in fact, I just made lunch. I was trying not to be, uh, to late, trying not to be late to come chat with you. And it took me three times as long to get my food onto the tortilla because everything's just trying to go everywhere. Hi, my name is Talon Jacobs. Have you seen any junk in space yet? Well, I've got good news. I haven't seen any junk yet, um, and I'll be honest, that's because NASA and the Department of Defense take really good care of us up here. Uh, they're tracking anything that might be a potential threat for us, um, and if it's even going to come within uh, a, what we call a pizza box, a, a region where we say, well, that's too close for comfort, um, then we do something about that. Uh, typically what we can do is we can move the space station. Uh, due to orbital mechanics, we don't have to work too hard to move the, the space station appreciably and make sure that there's no chance uh, that that debris hits us. Um, if we find the debris too late um, and we don't have time to move the space station, we've still got an answer there. We go hop in our spacecraft, the one that we flew up here, and we get all cinched in and ready to go just in case uh, something does hit the space station. Now we're in our lifeboat and we can come right back home and, and be safe anyway. Hi, my name is Addison Cunningham. On Earth we get car sick. Do astronauts get space sick and what does it feel like? It absolutely does happen. It's called space motion sickness, and we've got a term for it. And it's probably not unlike uh, being car sick or seasick, you know, where your 
your inner ear is telling your brain one thing and your eyes are telling your brain a different thing and because your brain can't kind of sort out what's going on, it starts to make you feel sick at your stomach. Um, the good news about space motion sickness is uh, if you do feel that way, it's typically over within about a day at most and then you're good for the rest of your mission. Hi, my name is Sam Pletcher. Do you feel like your training simulations prepared you for your tasks and experiences in space? Holy smokes, did it prepare us. Now, you can't simulate the space environment, but we simulate absolutely everything else. We've got mock-ups of the space station, both on the inside and the outside, where we do all of our training. Um, we, we practice our space walks. We're out in a giant pool uh, where we're running through all the procedures and all the skills we need to develop in, in order to do a spacewalk. We've got this super cool, high fidelity, uh, essentially virtual reality where we fly a, the robotic arm. Really, it's a computerized version of the robotic arm, but it's where we practice to fly the arm out and grab a cargo vehicle and then plug it into the space station, or we can use that robotic arm to help out with a spacewalk. So yeah, the simulations are absolutely incredible, uh, and then make everything uh, seem really natural when you're up here? Should we experience a warning or a caution? You know, we just react just like we do in our training. Um, maybe we just fall right back on that and no one gets real excited because we can, uh, we know that we've got a foundation of, uh, of great training and incredible people on the ground taking good care of us. Hi, my name is Zane Parrish and I was wondering, have you ever witnessed the cosmic ray visual phenomena in the International Space Station? So I think that was a question about cosmic rays and uh, being able to see them uh, in your eyes. Uh, in fact, I have seen that probably two or three times since I've been on board. Uh, when it happens, uh, it's usually at night for me. Uh, right as I'm about to fall asleep, my eyes are closed, and then you can kind of see this uh, quick little uh, white dash. Um, for me, it's really exciting because before I joined the Navy, uh, I did physics. I did high energy physics, and so we have experiments uh, that rely on detectors, and some of those detectors are actually a scintillator. A scintillator is just plastic in which high energy particles decay in there and we can actually uh, track those. And so I get really excited when I can see this happen in my own eye. I assume it's the exact same uh, phenomenon. My name is Gabriel Voslo, and my question is, how was your experience doing the spacewalk? Hey Gabe, well, I'll tell you what, doing spacewalks is really, really hard to put into words. Um, it is an amazing, amazing experience. Of course, we train really, really hard on the ground, uh, not necessarily specifically for the actual spacewalk we're gonna do, but certainly uh, the skills that we're gonna need in order to accomplish it. Um, so all of that stuff was right on, uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, nothing can simulate being out there and being above the planet uh, and getting work done. In fact, on our very first spacewalk, we had to go out to the very edge of the space station, um, and then we had to go a little bit further and hang off the edge and go around a, a canister out there. And I really kind of felt like we were at the edge of humanity. Um, and I'll tell you what, when I first looked at the path that I needed to take for those last five or six feet, for about a half second or so, my brain just said, nope, I'm putting my foot down, we're not doing this. Um, but then it very quickly changed its mind and uh, said, well, clearly uh, you need to do this, you're going to do this, and you might as well get on it now. Um, but I'll tell you what, that, that view, uh, that backdrop uh, of working hard out there, uh, watching that uh, planet go underneath us is just absolutely incredible. Uh, my name is George Henry Sheets, and I was wondering, uh, what do you guys do to entertain yourself on the space station? Hey, George. Uh, well, they keep us uh, awfully busy up here. Uh, we're working uh, probably 12 
ish hours a day, kind of nonstop. And then uh, we try to get weekends, but sometimes we don't. But we do get some free time. Uh, one of the favorite things to do up here is to look out the window. We have this half sphere, essentially, that hangs out the bottom of the space station. Uh, it's called the cupola, and it's got these seven gorgeous windows. And we just have the most amazing views of the planet. Um, sometimes uh, when we're uh, not looking out the window, we do something that's called uh, astronaut bowling. Uh, we try to see if we can make it down the entire length of the space station. Uh, you get three tries at it and uh, try not to hit any of the, uh, any of the walls or the hatchways. Um, and then uh, also it's really nice to be able to put things and have them stay if you don't put any forces on them. And that never gets old either. You can do that anytime you want. Hi, my name is Taryn Carey. My question is, what research do you do in space? The cool thing about this laboratory is we've got hundreds of experiments all running at the same time, and they go from everything from bio biology to uh, biotechnology to fundamental physics. Uh, in fact, this morning I was doing an experiment and helping set up an experiment uh, for plant growth. We're going to grow a little dwarf tomatoes up here, and we're, we're trying all different kinds of varieties of light in terms of color, in terms of duration, and, and the cycles that we're putting the plants through in different soils. And so we've got multiple plants that are evaluating all the different parameters so that eventually we can start growing our own our own fruits and vegetables up here, and then we're really going to need that for deep space. Uh, but me personally, uh, the experiments up here that I get really excited about, uh, again, because I did physics before I got here, uh, there's a big one on top of the space station. It's called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Super cool experiment that is just collecting cosmic rays from the, from the universe and answering questions about dark matter and dark energy. And it's seen some really, really cool physics. We've got another one that's called the Cold Atom Lab. Um, again, it's uh, a fun fundamental physics experiment uh, where we're looking at something called a Bose-Einstein condensate. Um, what's cool is it's the same technology we have on the ground, but up here you don't have to fight gravity, so you don't have to add any more energy to the system, which means things can get colder than they would be on the ground, and so we can actually see quantum mechanics happen at the macroscopic level. You could actually see quantum mechanics, which is really, really cool. Um, in terms of the science, um, you know, I'm often asked, what is it we're going to learn, and having done physics, and science in my life, I know that if we already know what we're going to find, then I'll tell you what, there's no reason to be doing the science. Uh, the, the reason we're doing the science is because we don't know what we're going to find, but I know it's going to be awfully, awfully cool. My name is Alan Dashelier, and how has being in space changed your perspective of the world we live in? Hey, Ellen, uh, that is a great question. Um, when we are hanging in that, that cupola and looking out uh, at the planet, um, I'll tell you, uh, this is, didn't really change my perspective, but it certainly reinforced it. Um, that, you know, the things that people tend to get angry about and disagree about and fight about, you know, once you have this kind of perspective, you kind of start to see how really absurd some of those things are that we, we get upset about. Um, you, you realize really quickly that if we're all working together and all getting along, we can protect this incredible planet that we have. Uh, we are just so lucky to have this planet. We've essentially won the lottery, uh, what we have, uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the galactic scale. And so it's such a perfect, perfect planet. There's no part of this planet that isn't beautiful. And that thin layer of atmosphere is all that's keeping us from being just a, a dried up rock. So uh, we just need to take good care of it. And that's the perspective that I've gained from being up here. I'm Ben Matter, and my question is, if there's no running water on the space station, how do you guys stay clean? Well, I sure hope that my crewmates would say that I do stay clean. Uh, we certainly uh, we certainly try hard, um, but you're right. There is no running water up here. Um, you know, at home on Earth, when we take a shower, the water keeps running, and the reason is that gravity is pulling that water off your body. But without gravity, there's a there's a phenomenon called surface tension. Liquids want to kind of stay stuck to whatever surface they're on. So up here, I've learned that I can kind of take 
what amounts to kind of like a bath. So here, check this out. This is probably a really bad idea right next to a, uh, an electric uh, microphone. Hold on. So I don't know if you can see that, but the water just sticks to my face. And so you essentially can take a bath because the water is just going to stay there and you can get warm water on you and shake it around a little bit. Um, but yeah, I am missing a, uh, a regular shower and I'm looking forward to getting home and getting one. Hi, I'm Kately Pollack. Are there any changes NASA has made to their spacecraft to make them more aerodynamic and easy to fly? So as with anything in technology, we are just getting better and better every single day. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, space travel is no exception. Uh, the spacecraft that we flew up here, the, uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon, is a highly automated vehicle uh, that the human can get in the loop and fly it as necessary. Uh, but really, it's an incredibly self-sufficient and, and automatic uh, vehicle. Um, but what hasn't changed in all the developments that we've made up to this point is really the physics. And so you'll notice that all the spacecraft, at least in terms of capsules, tend to look the same shape. We need that heat shield to help us get back in through the atmosphere safely and back into a place where we either splash down or parachute down and uh, to, to land. So either way, um, the physics hasn't changed, but uh, definitely the technology is get, just getting better and better every day and safer and safer. Hi, I'm Blaise Heights Marine, and I was wondering if you sneeze in space, and if you do sneeze in space, do you need to take precautions like tissues? What happens to the water molecules? <laughs> So that is a great question. Uh, if you ask my family, um, I do those kind of full body dad sneezes. They think that I'm, uh, I'm doing that by choice, but I'm not. Um, that is just how I sneeze. And yes, I do sneeze up here. And uh, the first couple times I did it, I'll be honest, um, it really uh, was uh, discomforting in the small of my back. And so I found that I needed to brace myself uh, against a wall, maybe push on one wall here and have my back up against another, and then it didn't really hurt. But there aren't many places, as you can see in the space station, where you can do that. So the only place where I could pull that off was in my crew quarters, which is just a little closet, which is where we sleep at night. And that's small enough, it's like a phone booth, and I could kind of get in there and brace myself. So anytime I sneezed, you or was about to sneeze, you could see me hustling back to try to get to a place where I could brace myself. Um, as far as where the sneezes go, um, we've got a really cool system up here that reclaims uh, almost all the water that we use. Um, so what we joke about is that uh, we turn yesterday's coffee into tomorrow's coffee. Um, it's an incredible system. Uh, we end up with really, really clean water, cleaner water than uh, typically anybody can get out of their tap. Um, but we reclaim everything, including any sweat or other, hum other moisture that comes off our bodies. So a uh, long answer to say, yeah, the moisture from a sneeze probably ends up there too. Although we try to go into our sleeves just like, uh, like a good person should. On behalf of Charlevoix, our community, our schools, staff, students, we would really like to thank NASA, all the astronauts for this incredible opportunity they've given us. Um, thank you very much and have a great day. Well, Charlevoix, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your school day today. Uh, these were amazing questions. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to send them my way. And uh, with that, go Raiders. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming Operation Audio Communications.